Well, thank you very much, <clears throat> Madam Chair. I appreciate uh, the opportunity. Thanks to each and every witness uh, for presenting today uh, some really fantastic testimony, as always. My first uh, question will be for Mr. Burns. So through you to Mr. Burns, please, Madam Chair. Sir, you spoke about 90, 80 to 90,000 um, jobs within the gaming industry. And I'm just, as you're very well aware, Michigan and New York already have single sports betting um, and Canada is losing out uh, basically daily, uh, both economically and financially. Do you have any idea uh, with regard to the economic side? You had mentioned uh, about two businesses making an app of some type. Any idea economically uh, what impact this will have for Canada? There have been a, a great deal of estimates about the size of where this market will grow to. Um, uh, Deloitte's recently released a report that said within five years, the sports gaming market see, could see $28 billion in gross wagering annually. Um, it's um, the impacts uh, ability is, is uh, the previous witness, Mr. Hansen from SEGA spoke to, and Mr. Dias has spoken about the impact on jobs and communities. They'd be able to bring people into gaming facilities, enhanced food and beverage offering, expanded entertainment choices and events around that. This is where the industry sees the ability to, to see jobs created and, and see those impacts. Because right now, you know, single force sports racing is not really leaving any economic benefit for the good in Canada. It's not paying salaries. It's not going to, to government revenues, which a lot of the gaming revenue does. And so um, it's a tremendous being able to turn this inward. I spoke about three businesses, for example, and this is the other side. There are companies that provide goods and services and technology in the gaming sports betting sector and gaming sector that can thrive for this. So it's, it's the reach is wide and it's diverse. And, and it's the opportunity to participate legally in giving people the legal options in Canada is extremely important to see some of these benefits occur. So as the market grows, there will be significant benefits back to, to communities through jobs and employment, uh, companies servicing the sports betting sector uh, beyond even you know, marketing partnerships, broadcasters, there's lots of opportunity um, for revenue to, and that economic impact to be felt right across the country. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Uh, Madam Cherry, th through you to Mr. Dias. Um, so in building up of what you had said, sir, about the 2,300 um, workers at Caesars Windsor, um, what would happen to the to Unifor gaming sector workers if this bill doesn't pass? Well, first of all, it has to pass because all it'll do is put us at a greater competitive disadvantage uh, with the U.S.-based casinos. Um, so I take a look at Falls View, for example. Take a look at Casino Windsor. We are estimating that just in those two casinos alone, single sports betting will, will require an additional 250 uh, jobs. 250 jobs. Uh, we're expecting that at Casino Windsor, it'll generate anywhere between 18 to $24 million in profits, and for Falls View, anywhere between 9 and $12 million. So this is significant. But I think the key point, and I think we all realize this, Canadians are gambling. It's $14 billion a year we're spending. And if we're not going to spend it in Canada, we're going to spend it abroad. And it isn't any more complicated than that. And I thank you very much for your question. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dyson. But right back to you through our chair, of course. So when you spoke about the, the new 250 jobs potentially for Caesars Windsor, um, are, are these low wage service jobs or can you can you explain as to what this really brings to the table, what it brings for Essex Windsor? Well, I bargained much better agreements than that. The reality <laughs> is, is that the, the gaming sector, our members in the gaming sector are, are very well paid. Um, these aren't your typical service uh, jobs. These are very densely unionized jobs, and and the pay is 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 significant. I mean, these are good paying middle class working class jobs. So, it will definitely have a major impact on the economy in Windsor. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and, and again, through you, Madam Chair. Um, to Mr. Dias again, wouldn't passing Bill C-18 represent an expansion of gaming in this country? So is that in essence not really what we're voting for? So look, we're legalizing what's already done. 
If you don't pass the legislation, people will continue to go offshore, which is going to have a negative impact on Canadian jobs. So why wouldn't the government want to extract a net benefit from this? Why wouldn't we want to control it in a safe, regulated environment? And so this is about creating good jobs for the communities. It's about a, a, a decent revenue strain for a stream for municipal, provincial, and federal governments. And like I said, it's it's going to be to be done in a safe environment. I think it's a winner all the way around for Canadians. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. I see I've only got thirty seconds. I just wanted to say thank you uh, to all the witnesses, and I really enjoyed Mr. Dias when you had mentioned about uh, how it's going to. Uh, kind of explode to, uh, in a good way tourism in our area as well if we can get this passed. So thank you very much.